not completely assembled so we can take then a good look at all the working components and exactly how how it's been made. My aim with this rebreather was to build a an extremely compact but extremely high quality rebreather and with quite a few differences to the rebreathers you probably know or have seen today. The main difference on this rebreather is that the scrubber unit is a completely apart from the rest of the unit and the electronics components are completely separate in their own pod which is dry and remains dry during the dives and can be taken off and taken away in one complete unit for servicing or downloading any information on your computers. On this unit, the scrubber unit is housed here at the bottom of the unit. Now on most units, um, you will need to remove the top of the unit, the electronics part of the unit to access the scrubber, then remove the scrubber, change the scrubber, place the electronics back in. With this unit, you just need to unscrew this pot. It's very quick, very fast. If you have a pre prac scrubber, it can be done in 15 or 20 seconds. Um, the unit is closed again without disturbing any other components within the unit. Okay, to remove the scrubber on the Aurora is quite simple. You just take hold of the pot. It's a quarter turn to the to my right. It's very easy, and then you take hold of the scrubber pot and you remove it. So here is your scrubber. If you had a P-Prac scrubber now, it would just be a question of placing it back in the unit, putting on the lid, 15 or 20 seconds. If you take a look inside the unit at the bottom you can see two holes. This is two of four holes which are used for the lungs. There are another two behind the electronics pod here. This ensures a good wob on the rebreather since uh, the two holes create a much larger surface area within the lungs itself. The unit breathes very well in all orientations. Most of you will already know about uh, basic scrubber designs. This one in particular is a radial scrubber. It also ex exists in an axial version, but to give a small explanation, this is in effect a split scrubber. It looks like a single scrubber, but in actual fact it's two separate holes. Each half can be filled separately. The scrubber can be rotated. Um, so basically here, the exhaled gas enters the scrubber at this point, radiates outwards into the outer section of the scrubber, goes around the scrubber, enters again and comes out here in effect giving you your circulation. The radial scrubbers give a slightly better work of breathing than an axial and an axial in my opinion uh, will give a slightly longer duration time. Both versions of the scrubber, the radial and the axial, are self-packing. Uh, each half has its own set of springs, its own tightening nut and its own o-ring. Each of these O-rings will seat in its own part of the rebreather body, giving a permanent seal between each half, stopping migration of any exhaled gas to the inhaled side. I tried to make the Aurora Blue one of the best quality made rebreathers. All the main body parts, the body shell, the pots, scrubber pot, are all made of marine grade aluminium. All the other non-essential components the tank mounts, the feet, the foot stems, the back plate and all the nuts and bolts are made of titanium and other gas contact parts and custom parts are made of 316 stainless steel. The most interesting part of the, this unit is the electronics section. All the electronics and critical components are housed in a single pod which I'm going to remove the lid from. I'm just going to unclip the battery and here is the electronic section. So all the cells, the cables, the circuit boards, the solenoid are all housed in this single pod which remains dry. There is no condensation that will appear in the pod and this is mainly to protect all the components of the unit. Also all the battery supply for the unit is contained within the pod lid. The only difference being that these are held in their own one atmosphere chamber bolted down O-ring sealed for protection so they remain in the rebreather but are not actually part of the loop. If you look here you can see how the battery pod has been constructed. It houses two 9 volt batteries and two 3.6 batteries which is all the power requirements of the unit.
Most other units are field serviceable, but the Aurora takes field serviceability to a whole new level. Everything, every critical component within the user is easily changed out in seconds or minutes. The solenoid, the cells, the cables, the circuit board can all be disconnected, removed and replaced very easily. Okay, the outer part of the pod is used for the entry points for the computer connections, the HUD connections and the gas connections. Everything is kept simple, easy, cannot be mixed up or connected uh, in the wrong way. Okay, now for the removal of the electronics pod. First remove all ancillary components, the gas connections. Computers may be removed or remain in place uh, as long as they detach from the, the rebreather itself. And it's just a matter of the quarter turn and the pod is removed. So this is very handy if traveling. If your unit cannot be taken on this hand luggage, you can at least take all your electronic components in your hand luggage. It's the most expensive part of the unit. So it's very handy in that respect. It's well protected. The rest of the unit, there are no more critical components here. The whole unit can be dipped in, 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 a, in a fresh tank of water and cleaned without any fear of damaging any uh, electronics or any other part of the unit. All the pots on the Aurora unit are double O-ring protected. So here we have double O-rings. The lid, the main body for the scrubber, the hose connectors are all double O-ring protected. Each of the chambers within the unit also has its own O-ring to prevent migration from the in from the exhale to the in inhale side, as do the scrubber pots within these two hulls. As you can see, there are absolutely no obstacles within the rebreather itself. There are no pipes, no connections. There are two entry points to each lung within the unit and also an entry point from the top chamber to the bottom chamber on each side. This means that it is not required for gas to pass through the lung in order to reach the scrubbers. The lungs are in fact just a branch off the unit itself and without the obstacles the flow of gas being much smoother around the unit helping for a better worker breathing. Okay, there are no T pieces on the Aurora Blue. The breathing hoses connect directly to the body. Any water that enters the loop will come down to the bottom and enter the lung at the bottom hole and can be actually be evacuated using an overpressure valve on the back of the lung underneath. The ADV is situated on the inhale side of the unit. Depression of the lung actuates its plunger which activates the ADV. The ADV doesn't have to be fitted, it has a shut-off valve, can be used or not used at the diver's discretion. Should there be any free flow, leakage, the ADV can be shut down and eliminated from the circuit. Reassembly of the unit is very simple. Bayonets are very easy to use. Reconnect the pod. Connect the power line. the lid in position, the scrubber, slides in very easily, and the outer pod. Reconnect the gas lines, as you can see it's very simple. Plug in your computers, plug in your HUD, plug in your breathing holes, and the unit is ready. It's very simple, very easy to use. The Aurora is a back mounted lung rebreather. You can see if I turn it around, the lungs themselves are in soft bags, they're not hard encased. They're between the wing and the back plate. The back plate itself is bent. To the shape of the shoulders. This gives much more place for the lungs to expand and contract. This makes it much easier to breathe if you're inflating your lungs on the surface. You don't get that uh, the feeling that they're being squashed. 
and also the back plate is bent or rolled to the shape of the waist. This gives an extremely comfortable back plate to wear. Okay, the harness itself is a very simple harness. As I said before, the back plate is made of titanium. The D-rings and triolites on the harness itself are also made of titanium. The manual inject buttons for oxygen and dilument also are fixed to the harness at this point, giving a very clutter-free chest area and very comfortable to dive. Okay, this is a very small look at how the Aurora is made and how it works. Um, I'll do a, a slightly longer version with a complete breakdown of the unit at a future date.